Hello everybody, how are you today? Um, my name is Grace and you are watching my little knitting podcast, which is, I've just thought of something else I've forgotten and I don't know where it is. Yep, no, I know what it is, it's good, it's fine, it's all within reach. Um, so you're watching my uh, podcast called Babbles Travelling Yarns. Welcome. I hope you've had a lovely time since the last time I saw you. If this is the first time you're meeting me, welcome. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. You're super. But you knew that already, right? So um, I've got a lot to show you this week um, because I think it's kind of been a bit of a break because I went away and I released a video of um, a spinning, a kind of a textile study day that I did back in, God, about two weeks ago, the 20th of August. What are we on now? The start of September. This is Thursday. 7th. I've written it down 600 times today and I keep asking every single time. Anyway, the 7th of September today. So um, the last video I actually took was taken on the 20th of August, but I released it last weekend. So a lot has happened, right? <clears throat> so, stop saying so. I need lip balm and then my life will be better. This is some lip balm that my aunt gave me. It's Joe's Lip Balm, 100% natural coconut and shea butter and essential oils is like a peppermint tea. It's delicious. Now, where was I then? <laughs> la 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 la. Okay, so I have got a couple of events to talk about. <laughs> An audio podcast that I've fallen in love with two of them actually. Um, the Outlander Cow. I've got some prizes in and I can't wait to show you. Uh, and I've also got two big whips on my needles that I'm really excited about. And so the first thing I'm going to talk about is what I'm wearing. So I'm wearing my um, a hand spun shawl. And I kind of wear shawls. Does anyone else wear shawls like this? So this is just a triangular, a big triangular shawl but I've actually knotted it on the ends. And the reason I do that is I kind of like the idea of them being like a, I don't know what's it called? Just kind of a shoulder cover, not a neck warmer sometimes. So what I do is I get the ends and I tie it behind me just gently. So I've got enough room still. So I do a little bit of stretching and it's like a little shrug and it stays in place. It's so handy. So I like wearing this like this. This is a hand spun shawl that I made from fiber that I got from the, the brown is Adagio Mills um, from Australia, from New South Wales, I think. Oh, I can't remember, it's really bad. New South Wales or Victoria. And this, um, this camel silk and alpaca is from Felt Fine and it's beautiful. And I made up the pattern myself, just out of a basic kind of recipe for a triangular shawl, which was much easier than I thought it would be. I'm drinking some peppermint tea because my friend came over and he doesn't uh, drink um, caffeinated tea, so this is the one he picked, so it's still in the pot, so I'm having it. Ah, delicious. Also, I've been having some, like, tummy crampy problems and... Um, Peppermint is really good for digestion. So that's awesome. Now, where else? I'm really like all over the place today. I'm sorry. Should we start talking about what I'm knitting first? And then I'll get on to the admin stuff about events that are coming up and the Outlander Cal prizes. And you can hang on to the end for that if you're really interested in that. So the first thing that I'm really excited about is my so faded sweater. Woo! -hoo! It's actually in two bags now because that's where I go with that. 
So I started working on this in uh, Spain, or France when I went to France last week. Was that last week? God, it was, I think. That's mad. So I started it using this, um, this is Hedgehog Fibres in the Seed cutaway. And it is a beautiful bear yarn with speckles of lots of speckles of pinks and oranges and greens like chartreuse greens and browns and magentas so delicate like super super delicate and fine speckles really nice and then i um start i switched over and i started using nora george yarns in the um verita serum colorway which was a mrs weasley's uh, knit club, uh, club yarn, her, her Harry Potter club. Uh, that was uh, the fourth round, which was, I think it was April, May and June or, yeah. So it's really nice. It's got this kind of creamy touch. It's very similar, just a little bit more kind of yellowy, a little bit more yellow. So yeah. And now I'm on to another color. It's so exciting when you can change colors. <laughs> so I'm using this color, which is the Felix Felicis colorway, which is so nice. But however, this yarn is more variegated than the other two. The other two were kind of very lightly speckled. So that there wasn't much kind of pooling or like, not pooling, but there was a little bit of kind of striping going on with the second color. So I've decided to pull from the inside and the outside and knit every second round um, like that, just to try and make sure that I'm breaking up um, any sort of uh, pooling that can happen with hand dyed yarns. So let's show you the final, well, the, the mid middle product. Uh, okay, is this gonna work? Give me a bit of slack. Give me a bit of slack, lads. Lads and ladies. So, the, it's still on the needles and the needles are quite small because I'm trying to work on knitting a bit faster because I want to knit everything. So they say that, well, Elise from My Two Tips podcast told me that if you knit on a smaller circumference, you spend a lot less time moving the stitches around the needles, which is totally true. Thank you so much, Elise. So this is the sweater. So if you can see, oh my goodness, I don't know how, I should get a hanger. Oh, up in my game. But anyway, so if you can, oh, oh hang on. I've got it, my hands are a hanger. There you go, that's it. Whoop, whoop. So if you can see here, there's a little bit of banding happening here. So in order to not make that, um, stop that happening in down here, I, um, I blended, you know, in between the colors here. I am now, um, alternating between the outside and the inside of the ball, which is just hopefully it will break up the yarn colors a little bit and just prevent, like, I don't really mind that, but I would prefer it if it wasn't there, if you know what I mean. I'm not going to rip back. Like, <laughs> I'm not doing that. But I love it. It's like dip dying down. And I cannot remember what size I'm knitting. I think I'm knitting the 30. I'm knitting a smaller size than I would normally. Um, slightly smaller just around the bust because I definitely want it to fit around there. And so far it really, really is, which is amazing. A little bit of negative ease, I think, on a garment where you want it to fit nicely up here is quite a nice idea. Because I just sometimes have issues with this kind of bulky business up in between here. I just don't like it, I don't know. Prefer personal preference. I feel like I'm quite low, I'm gonna come up. Whoop! coming up in the world there you go now you can see what I'm talking about so yeah this is this is working so well I'm half thinking about going back picking up the sleeves and knitting down half the sleeves or you know something like that before I'm finished but no I'll probably just keep going and then carry on I like to knit the sleeves two at a time because like everything I hate having the same thing to do again so I normally pick up the sleeves on one big long 
cable and then just go back and forth. And I don't really have difficulty with that. It doesn't really bother me. I carry on it regardless. So I'm really excited. And do you know what? These colors are so outside my um, comfort zone, aren't they? Like they have these amazing yellow pops in there. Like I didn't think I was a yellow person. Totally am apparently. I mean, only little pops of it. I wouldn't go for a giant canary yellow jumper or, you know, scarf or anything like that. I, that would not be my choice. So the next color I'm going for is Polyjuice Potion. Oh my goodness. So this is super green and it's got some really nice purples in there as well. So it's really going to end on a bang. <laughs> Look at this. I think it's going to be really quite nice. So the greens are going to be popping in there, are popping in there as you can see, and it's just going to be even more intense there. Yay! And it's still got this base of yellow, which is really nice with um, Tracy's uh, cl uh, clubs because she makes sure that you can use them together, you know, that they're kind of related in somehow so that, you know, you, you're getting three skeins that could be used together, if you know what I mean. And with the whole fade situation at the moment, I'm loving it. I'm loving it, loving it, loving it. So that's what I've been up to. Um, oh, another little tip for knitting faster in the round on a sweater, if you're stuck in stocking it heaven or hell, depending on how you, I really enjoy stocking it. Love it because I just fly through it and I don't have to think about it. If I have to think about stuff like, oh, it's hard. So I just generally don't bother most of the time and I make mistakes. But <laughs> so um, I enjoy, if I'm on a, a circular needle and they're interchangeables, I put a size, two sizes smaller on the left hand needle, the needle that you are knitting off. And then the needle that you're putting the stitches onto are the size that you're getting your gauge on. I find it doesn't affect my gauge. My gauge is still spot on because all the needles are being formed on this right hand needle. So it is, and it, but it, it allows the stitches to slip off faster off the left hand needle. So that's comfortable for me. Uh, it's something I need to change on the other sweater that I'm going to be talking about. Um, fairly too sweet, I think. I think these, I think I'm knitting on size fours on both of these, both of my jumpers. And my, so Faded is on uh, Chow Goose and my colorwork sweater is on Haya Haya's. And I started off on the Haya Haya's, I started off on the four inch Haya Haya's on that colorwork sweater and I picked them up again because I've been used to these long ones. It was really difficult for me to get used to the four, four inch Haya Haya's again. So I changed over to the 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 five inch or the longer the longer ones I don't know exactly five inch six inches um higher higher set and I'm getting on a little bit faster but I do need to change the tip so but that's okay I do need to change the tip for the left hand needle so that I can knit a bit faster because I feel like it's a bit slower even though the yarn is a DK weight yarn and it should be faster to come up you know but I think I've got way more needles on. I'll show you shall I show you what I'm talking about but I just want to sit here and knit on this the whole time Right, oh, let me show you the bags I've got them in. I've got this beautiful bag from Kate from Hawthorne Cottage Craft. Stunning bag, super lovely quilted, and these nice snappy snaps. And it folds over so that you can pop that on there. But I don't. Generally, I leave it open like a big bucket bag because I'm always knitting out of it because I always use it. And I'm also using my trusty Girl So Sheepy Australiana bag. Oh, and with a stain. Don't look at the stain. It's because I use it so much. I love it. I love it. It's so nice. It's really handy because this is a little bit less quilted. So you I can scrunch it into my tiny handbag when I'm going to work. And I take it up to theatre and I'm knitting in the staff room in theatre. And everyone's like, have you finished that jumper yet? And I'm like, no. It takes time. Plebs. Muggles. <laughs> oh, well. So yes, though that is my so faded, I'm calling I'm calling it my faded potions. Yay! Nice job, Grace. Okay, now this is the the one I'm super excited about picking up again. 
Now, if you've been following me from the start, which many of you have, I um, had a shame project. <sighs> it wasn't a shame project. It was just a project with associated shape. <laughs> so I went to this class by Anna Maltz, the sweater spotter, and I did a class called uh, Color Work Winged from the Top Down. A class by Anna Maltz, aka the sweater spotter, at the craft sessions, which is in uh, Victoria. Oh, I think it was in the Southern Highlands. I actually don't know the actual name of the place anymore because it's gone out of my head and I didn't drive there. So somebody else drove me. <laughs> one of the, um, was it Deb? I think Deb from one of the Skane sisters, uh, founders, drove us down. Yes. So I am working on a sweater that I started back in, gosh, I think it was October. Feels like a long time ago. But <laughs> I've come so far, I'm so proud of myself. Every time I pick it up, I'm really proud. I'll just show you. So. So when I stopped, I had stopped on this sweater just after these flowers, these pink flowers. And there's a couple of reasons why I did that. It was coming into summer and Sydney summer is hot. And the last thing I wanted was a DK weight double, like Fair Isle sweater on anywhere near me actually. So I changed over to socks or something, I can't remember. I think I was making like cotton dish cloths, small little things. And also I didn't know what was coming next because the idea with the wing it from the top down class is that you make up your own pattern. So you're completely making up your design. So I started off with a corrugated rib, which is traditional Fair Isle um, starting rib. And then I added in some short rows into the design here, the first design. So I increased at the short rows so the front is uh, slightly lower than the back, or it should anyway when it's sitting on my neck. So you see those long white chevrons are quite long and then in the front they're quite small. So that was lovely. And then I carried on, I, I, I got the inspiration that I really liked these tall window-like panels and it reminded me of um, the windows in Beauty of the Beasts um, library. So then, of course, I was like, Beauty and the Beast, I love it so much. And so these little ones are roses. And this was before I realized color dominance was important in um, in the in knitting, uh, Fair Isle especially. So there are supposed to be little pink blips there. You can see they're very, very tight. So obviously I, I wasn't very good at that. And this was also that row with the pink pink little sections. I was also carrying three colors at once, which was challenging to say the least. Um, so I'm gonna go back in over those and actually just duplicate stitch those little rosebuds on there just to make them pop a little bit more. When I got down to these, these flowers, however, I realized color dominance and color dominance is the idea that you hold the yarn that you want to pop in your non-dominant knitting hand, because I knit two-handed Fair Isle sometimes. So I'm Norm, I'm an English flicker. So you would hold the yarn in your non-dominant hand, but also continental tends to be a little bit looser anyway. And as you're knitting, you knit normally with your background color, and then you pop in your um, um, contrast color. And it just means the stitches are slightly more kind of impressive. And you can kind of see it, so these are kind of all quite tight and quite uniform. So the little pink isn't contrasty enough against the green to really stand out. However, when you come down, so I started again, I decided, feck it, I'm just gonna go for it. I'm, I'm not gonna be so particular about what, you know, cause I think I was like, oh, I wanted to be perfect. I'm so happy with the rest of the sweater. I wanted to be perfect. And I got lost in that like, oh, perfection, like paralysis and I just left it and I left it in the bag for ages and I was also really concerned that I didn't when I'd left Australia I didn't have enough yarn to finish the sweater I just bought like random balls of yarn from Morrison's son from the granny square in Newtown 
uh, Morrison Sons estate four ply or uh, eight ply which was what most of this is made out of and I realized that I didn't have enough to finish the sweater and I didn't I mean I could maybe could have got a short sleeved kind of cropped sweater out of it but that's not what I wanted I want a full sweater and I also I didn't want to color work the whole way down I didn't have enough of a body color to do it so I just kind of left it so there are my excuses anyway one VK in it was Saturday or was it Sunday or Saturday I can't remember um virtual knit night for anyone that doesn't know I run them on uh Instagram and if you want to send me an email I can add you to the email list if you'd like to join us and also on my Patreon page if you'd like to um, uh, donate some money towards the VKNs. They cost a little bit of uh, money to host the Zoom platform and they also cost a little bit of my time to organise. So thank you so much to all the Patreons who do. Yes. I will talk a bit more about Patreon um, fun stuff in the end um yes so what was I talking about yeah so I didn't have enough yarn I didn't know what motif to do next and it was super hot in Sydney so it all went into a bag and I brought it home to Ireland and it was sitting up there in the corner forever <laughs> so I pulled it out someone asked what happened to that thing and I was like oh no so I pulled it out and then I think within let me let me show you my maths Within a few minutes, I figured out, I'd done all my maths, I had to retake my gauge, and I worked out that all I needed, oh yeah, my numbers were off as well. I couldn't find the right motif for the right number. Like I needed to get like a motif that was five stitches across and all the motifs I like were six stitches across. Anyway, we figured out if we just took, if I just knitted two together somewhere that I would come down to the right um, stitch count and my, um, my motifs would look perfect and they did so i just basically there was no excuse a bit, little bit of accountability goes a long way in the vkn <laughs> so after the vkn ended and i picked it up on sunday i think it was the saturday one anyway i decided that i'm at the stage now where it's big enough where i can split for the sleeves however you may notice a subtle difference <laughs> You may or may not between this this portion which is what I knitted first and this portion which was the other side my gauge had completely changed but you know what it's okay because I needed a bit more stretch around the bottom part to get over my shoulders and also I'm not gonna rip it out so that's that deal with it make it work so this was then all of my maths on the back of a an envelope you know as you do so i had to get i had 5.5 stitches per inch 5.5 <laughs> 5 stitches per inch which was 2.2 stitches per centimeter and i had measured around my arm was 75.9 stitches so 76 stitches i had to have two of those so oh yeah so yeah, I'd worked out what the centimetres were and how many. So if I on my arms were like, well, they must have been 35 centimetres around. I needed 75, you know, 75 or I don't know. I, I worked it out. <laughs> it took a long time. A lot of calculating and dividing and multiplying and adding. And who knows? Like, this is the most useful. Maths is very useful for knitters. <laughs> but I'm not very good at it. So I did have help, so that was okay. So I figured out that if I had um, 62 stitches for the sleeve, if I took off 62 stitches off the sleeves, I would have 100 stitches for the front and the back. And I would then cast on 10 stitches underneath to make up the stitches that I needed because I needed like 72. So I had 62 and then added on, whatever. It's working and it's fitting, so that's nice. <laughs> However, I do have a lot of this. There's a lot of stitches on here. So I think I'm going to start decreasing a little bit, but then I'm kind of concerned about, um, I'm concerned about the look of it if I start decreasing. I kind of, this kind of is going to be a, 
a kind of a big cozy oversized jumper by the time it blocks out I feel like so maybe I'll just go straight down and have no shaping so it won't be like weird top heavy like super fitted and then this big kind of like I don't know Egyptian style collar <laughs> anyway um oh yes also what yarn am I using for the body so we were looking around, I was like, oh, I don't have enough yarn. And then someone down in Australia was like, oh, I can get it for you. I can just pop in and get it for you. I was like, no, 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 I have enough yarn. And then I looked around and, and I found, <laughs> such a silly person, but I've got a huge amount of DK weight yarn wool from Australia. So this is De Toco Station from Briar Patch Yarns uh, in the uh, in shade P, 810. Do I have a proper? Oh, yeah. So, this is the Bay of Islands bluey green color, and it is absolutely gorgeous. It's perfect. It's quite, it's, uh, I don't think, I don't think it's a soup. Hang on. It has been shrink resist retreated, uh, treated. So, I think that might be um, a superwash. Because doesn't like shrinkage on wool mean felting? I think it is superwash, but it doesn't feel very superwashy. Feels lovely. Feels so nice. And I just can't like I can believe it because you know you all we all have certain color choices that we love. But it just it almost matches this dark green. So I just started blipping it in here in this leaf motif. And then this kind of um I don't know what these are, spears. <laughs> and then this little pico edgy type thing. And I'm just I'm just carrying on now. So I'm going to choose one of the motifs to um, do around the arms and maybe around the bottom. And um, yeah. So I don't know when I'm going to be finished, but I have enough yarn. I have no excuses because we're coming into winter now, so I have no heat on the case, and I have no motifs to choose anymore. So I'm flying. I'm absolutely flying on this. And they are the two things that I've been working on like a monster so i hope you enjoyed seeing them i enjoyed sharing them uh i am basically there's a couple more things that i have on my radar but i don't want to sort of concentrate too much on anything else until the start of my cow my outlander cow yay it starts on sunday the 10th of september the same day as the perth yarn festival if anyone's going uh which is very scottish so it's basically like a scottish festival although you know in outlander there's also a massive french thing you know so you know you could tie it in basically the idea is knit anything that could remotely relate to a um, uh, Outlander, the TV series and the book series. I'm, I'm including the books and the TV series. So if people are, you know, want to knit anything that's remotely related, if they've never seen Outlander, but read the books, if they've never read the books, but seen the series, if they want to start watching Outlander, please work away. <laughs> it's really enjoyable. Well, there's a few parts of it. Uh, there are, uh, for people who haven't watched it, trigger warning, there is um, scenes of rape and miscarriage. So just be aware of those two things. If those would um, detract from your total enjoyment of the entertainment, um, don't watch them. Or if you're personally affected by any of those things. Just a good idea to put that out there. Um, just know it's not real. <laughs> but still, that doesn't help sometimes. So I've got some amazing prizes. I want to thank all three ladies who have, uh, all three people. I'm not sure if everyone is a female person. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I want to thank everyone who's donated prizes for this. They are absolutely stunning. Let me show you. So I recently got the last prize that I was expecting in the post and then she... So where's the, where's the thingy? Did I put it somewhere? Did I put it down? Did I make it fall? Oh, there it is. 
I found it. Yeah. So this is a beautiful um, parcel from Krista. And Krista has an Etsy shop called Longview Creations and her Instagram is let me create today with a two instead of it like numeral two day. And she was so sweet. She contacted me on Instagram and she said, I'd love to provide a present uh, or a prize for the podcast for the, for the Outlander Cal. And then I saw what she was making and I was like, oh my. There is nothing more perfect than these. So she sent me two, one for me and one for you. Lucky people. I love, <laughs> I love these so much. So one of them is this beautiful dark brown, like chocolatey brown tweedy fabric. And she's got the fit, the portraits of Jamie, uh, Jamie and Claire. So Claire's over there and Jamie's over there. And look at this beautiful zipper pull as well. It's this really, really lovely Celtic knot, Celtic knot heart. And it's, oh, it's so nice. And these are really lovely quilted. They're box bags. So they've got box at the bottom. And that's her lovely tag, Longview Creations. You can see that. It's a little bit on it. Longview Creations. And on the inside, oh, I love this one. It's got like these kind of briars and berries, very autumn-y, I love it. Very, very nice. It's a, and I love that it's a bright on the inside of the bag so you can see where things are. I love that. That is really, I can't decide which one I want. So there's this other one. I want to see if the other one is inside as bright as well. I can't remember. Oh, so this one's a little bit darker, but it's got this, oh, check, oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at that. It's kind of like a grey, but it's like a bluey grey. Oh, it's very, very beautiful. This is kind of very civilised. Very. These are very, yes, very classy bags. Very classy bags. And on the inside is this um, really lovely check pattern. Kind of like a tweed, Harris tweed. And it's the same construction, exact same apart from the colours. They're so pretty. I can't decide which one. I think I might lie out the winner. I think the winner will choose which bag they will get. That's a good idea because then that takes away any sort of guilt. Yay! So, so I am also, there's another beautiful little gift that was given to me by Marion, who is uh, Marion Prince on Instagram, and she is a wonderful uh, illustrator. Um, and printmaking, printmaker and painter. She's an artist, she draws incredibly beautiful. Um, often, a, a, a lot of her work is, um, oh gosh, I, like Irish oh, fauna, is that right? Wildlife, Irish wildlife. And she's very, very uh, interested in cautionary fairy tales and a lot of Irish uh, cautionary fairy tales are based on animals. So you should have a look at her Instagram, it's beautiful. I've bought this incredible painting of swallows off her. I couldn't leave it behind me, it was too nice. But she also makes these beautiful stitch markers and I'll just take it out. They're so beautiful. I'm using some on my, um, on my Beauty and the Beast color work jumper. But there's these lovely kind of ceramic, I don't know if you can see, but lovely ceramic um, balls. And then the stitch marker is a little fairy. It's so cute and adorable. And they just, they sound so nice as well. I love that sound. <laughs> so thank you so much, Marianne. And there is also going to be an amazing yarny prize from the wonderful um, The Moon and Sixpence Yarn or Sixpence Moon on Instagram. She sent an entire kit. I think I showed this the last time, but I might not have actually. Oh my goodness. I think I'm gonna have to order another one. It is the most stunning kit I have ever seen. These colours, you know what, I saw them on her Instagram and I fell in love with them and I was like, no Grace, that's ridiculous, you can't pick them one. And then, look what she sent. So one of you lucky people is going to get this. I think this prize is so spectacular. I wonder, should I put it all in one or should I split it up so there's more chances to win? 
answers down below. If you would like the prizes all split up, I mean, I'm, the yarn is staying together because the yarn is the most perfect thing I've ever seen together, right? So um, if, if you want to have the prizes split up, comment down below. If you would like them all together in one big wallop, let me know, right, answers down below. So let me talk to you about this. So this is the shawl set and this is the colorway Castaway, this beautiful teal. It's an MCN fingering. So that's, oh my God, Merino cashmere nylon fingering. And you can feel it. 100 grams is 400 meters. Good Lord. They're all, it, they're all in the Castaway colorway. Oh, right. It's a whole shawl set. <gasps> I just... I am in love with this center skein offset by these blues and oh browns. Oh, teals, I think. Oh my gosh. Oh. Do you know what? I'm not doing the cal anymore. I just have to have these right now. Sorry, bye. I'm not really busy. <laughs> so they're super exciting. And I have my yarn cast up, even though I can't win. That sucks. So I have my um, projects all caked up. Sock needles. I haven't printed off this Fergus sock pattern because I don't have a printer. You saw. And look at the little tin. It's going to be so cute. So these are Ellie and Ada in the sock set. And I can't remember what the name of the yarn was. Do I have the thingy? Oh, 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 oh. The... The dark purple is called Shadow, and I've lost the other label. Oh no, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't got it, I haven't, I haven't. Oh, so the set is called The Shadow. Nice. The Shadow by Ellie and Ada. It's so cute. Oh, I'm so excited to cast these on. So I'm gonna do a slightly longer toe, I think. I was talking to Anna about the Fergus socks. <gasps> by the way, um, Anna's, and I think it's still doing the 25% off with the code Sosnuk. And people were laughing at me because apparently it was like a really difficult word to say. And I'm like, uh, just learn Irish. It's fine. Just learn Gaelic. For God's sake. It's easy. Because <laughs> uh, Sosnuk in Irish also means English. The English. So it's easy for me. <laughs> I think they spell it slightly differently. I think they spell it with two N's. I mean, just spell it with one, but same same and i'm so excited to cast out my hitchhiker with nora george in her thistle in her tweed base <gasps> it's the edinburgh uh, edinburgh yarn festival special colorway because i harassed her in the line <laughs> winning <laughs> so yeah i'm really excited about that i am probably going to be knitting on either the socks or the shawl when i go to the um Atlantic Knitscapes uh, at the end of September because hopefully I'll have finished this oh, I won't have finished the sweaters but I'm still you know so this weekend I've got um, quite a lot on I wish I could go to several things that I won't be going to because I'm sad but no I'm I couldn't go to them for lots of reasons mainly money so the first one is Perth Yarn Festival, which is happening this Sunday, which should be so exciting. And the second one, which I just found out about through uh, LB Hand Knits and Wolfin Studios uh, Instagram feed, is a flax mill open day in Derry Lane in Dungiven in Northern Ireland. It's a free event and it's um, in an old flax mill um, that's been taken over by a German family. I think there's a massive event going on, all sorts of fiber goodness. Uh, Elby Handnets, I don't know her actual name, but she is teaching a continental knitting workshop there. And Wolfinch Studios is teaching a natural dyeing workshop. However, it is in Northern Ireland and it takes about seven hours to drive up there. So I can't go. Also, uh, this weekend I am going up to spend some time with my friend from Australia. Um, she has come over to Ireland to, to a wedding and I've been invited as her plus one. So I don't know anybody, but it'll be fine. So there's lots of driving and hopefully lots of knitting time. I asked her, so funny, I asked her, Ooh, is it okay if I bring my knitting? And she was like, I thought it was attached. Like it was like a package deal. I was like, you are correct. 
so I'm so excited about that. Um, what else have I been to? Oh yes, I wanted to talk about a few audio podcasts that I've been listening to. Oh, and then one other thing, don't let me forget. Um, so I have been following um, The Cottage Notebook uh, for a while somebody recommended her and I saw I've, I've been following her on Instagram and I just happened to catch a live um, she was doing a live cast on Instagram and I caught her and I started just chatting away do you know me I can't stop talking but we got really really like into like just chatting about podcasts and how how they help us and I think there was someone there who didn't watch podcasts and it wasn't an issue and we were like oh my god it's the best thing ever <laughs> start right now <laughs> So, um, uh, the, her podcast is the CLN podcast from the Cottage Notebook. And Nadia is her name. She's an Irish girl, an Irish woman, excuse me. And she, uh, sometimes works in This Is Knit in Dublin. And I'm hoping to go up to This Is Knit in October, uh, maybe the second weekend in October up to Dublin, just for a day, just myself on the bus or the train, although there's cheap really cheap buses and I can knit all the way and listen to audio podcasts and uh, meet up with uh, Nadia and maybe if anyone else would like to join and do a little meet up in October um, in Dublin do let me know I'd love to meet you and have like a nice coffee or a dinner or whatever anywhere I need I don't know what the Dublin scene is like I need a Dublin scene I need a scene knit scene so yeah get in contact with me or comment down below or whatever and we'll we should organize something right the old uh, you know country bumpkins coming up to the city it's like that um what's that date at christmas that all of the all of the country folk come up to to dublin to do their shopping in clearies anyway it's gonna be like that it's gonna be awesome i'm gonna get a little 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 draggy kind of thing to carry on beside me it's gonna be awesome maybe my my good mess <laughs> so that's the college notebook podcast you should really listen to her she she deals a lot she does a lot of interviews so hers are very inter interview based and it's fascinating fascinating listening to her she has i think it's her third episode where she interviewed uh the woolly wormhead uh who is the amazing hat designer now i can't actually find that episode um but that's a sample of what she does i think the most recent episodes i can find are, are the oldest episodes i can find at like episode 11 um i think she's up to 20 something now at the moment so there's still plenty there that we can all have a look at so she does a lot of she deals a lot with gardening and creating and knitting so i think her her tagline is craft love grow yeah so um if you're interested in kind of slow living and making your own things which i think we all kind of are yeah you should definitely listen to her also <laughs> another so on this live chat there was also another woman um called um under the instagram handle mrs b's curiosity cabinet and she has an audio podcast under the same name mrs b's curiosity cabinet and i listened to her most recent podcast and wow so both of these podcasts are highly um like really nicely organized you know so you can listen to it the conversation that they're having makes sense when they're flowing from point to point as opposed to me and i'm just like Bleh! but that's fine too we all have our own skills you know mine is mainly comedy so yeah so mrs b's curiosity cabinet had the most recent one was one that really resonated with me like deep in my core and it was all about the economics of crafting and making so she was talking about how she um tries to uh buy the best quality that she can in her budget she actually puts a budget aside for buying like good quality organic locally produced or sourced or uh, you know environmentally responsible yarns and fabrics and then she tries to get as much out of them as possible so she will try and get a sweater out of eight balls of yarn instead of ten balls of yarn if she doesn't need them you know she will try and make it work or she tries to make a um if they ask for two yards of fabric she can figure out how she can make a t-shirt out of one yard of fabric instead you know and not have as much waste fascinating podcast i think everyone should listen to both of those podcasts really lovely women 
thank you so much for putting yourselves out there and like crafting like really beautiful like little audio gems which I listened to on my walk to work so thank you so much for that there was also one last thing I wanted to mention um and I was watching another Irish podcast uh, it was a, uh, from the two ladies who run the Olin Olinand um magazine and the podcast is called the Olinand podcast um so Olin is uh, spelled O-L-A-N-N -N, and it is the Irish word for wool and um, and is like the extra bit. So it would be all and, and whatever else they're talking about in that magazine that month. So they're two absolutely lovely ladies. And I was talking to Laura. I think she commented, I can't remember. Oh yeah, we were talking about their knitted knockers campaign, which is fascinating. It's so funny. You should watch their last podcast about it. They just crack their... <laughs> you should watch their podcast. If you enjoy laughing your little bum off go watch the podcast <laughs> so knitted knockers is a really lovely campaign for women who have had mastectomies after breast cancer and breast cancer awareness month is coming up in october and i know um some women who are personally going through this um awful disease situation in life at the moment and uh anything that we do makes us feel better but also it's anything that can particularly cause like happiness in someone that is going through a really tough time or has had gone through a really tough time is always a good thing right so I was uh, watching this podcast and they were saying that uh, the, the, the girls were saying that um, they find the knitted knockers incredibly useful incredibly good because they um it's not an, another surgery that they have to have. They can pop these like specially knitted knockers into their bra and like move them around. So they, they, they're, they quite, they're quite malleable and they stay in position or they can put extra stuffing in or they can take extra stuffing out. They're incredibly versatile, um, which just makes them like magical, don't you think? So I'm gonna put a few links to a few things down um, in the show notes. Uh, if you're interested, do contact me. If now, if I ever leave anything out of my podcast, feel free to contact me and ask me specifically because I I really don't enjoy writing show notes and sometimes I just get sick of writing them and I just give you the basics and carry on. Um, you can please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I sometimes I'm not able to get back to people immediately because I work a full-time job and I have all these other things that I'm doing. Also, I have a life. So if I don't get back to you immediately, please don't take offense. That is me being a normal human being with life stuff going on. Um, yes. I'll talk a bit more about the Knitted Knockers campaign um, further into October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, if you, you know, just throwing it out there, when was the last time you had a mammogram? When was the last time you checked the ladies? Sort it out, check it, make sure you know what's normal. Okay. I'm talking to you. Okay, I love you. I am sure the second I shut off this camera, I will think of something else to say, but... We're running up to 49 minutes, 50 minutes. So I think I will leave it there. No, 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 no. Because I have a few more things to tell you. So, there go. so I want to thank everybody who, um, took part in the shop update who ordered yarn from me in the for in the shop update oh, must have been two weeks no one week ago now uh everything's gone out and i hope everything is on its way i know a couple of people in ireland have received their packages which is so lovely um and i have a couple of things left in the shop and i just wanted to show you in case you're interested so i have got one skein of golden glory on the silky base which is this really lovely delicious kind of mustardy yellow really nice it the sheen off this is so so lovely it feels kind of cool against the skin as well because of the silk content so this is a sock a sock weight most of these are sock weight um, i do have some irish iron weight which is still in the shop too so that's number one some silky silky and delicious i have one at uh, silky Del uh, calypso 
which is on, on the same base. It's <laughs> I love this one. I think I have one for myself as well because I want to knit something out of it. It's just so, so nice. So if you're interested, they might still be in the shop at that point. I love this little delicate lilac. It's lovely. I have got a few cotton bases left. I've got two in the peach or in the blush, sorry, blush in the cotton, which is so nice. So this is 50% um, uh, superwash wool, 22% or 20% cotton, 25% nylon. Yeah, 25% cotton, 25% nylon. Oh, that's a, a typo. Oops, crazy. But it's this really, really lovely soft cream peach. I have got one of the pinky oh, in the cotton. Do you know, I think that would be really cute in like a shawl or even a sweater. You could probably get a sweater out of that. I could try and get a sweater out of that. A little cropped sweater or a nice lacy open gauge sweater. <gasps> that would be so nice. Oh, I might make that for myself. No, they're still in the shop. Anything is in the shop, I'm not allowed to take out of the shop. That's a rule I've made for myself. <laughs> And I've got another one in the cotton in this delicious green, which is so hard to photograph. I cannot photograph this properly, but that is correct. That is the correct, um, really light green. I've called it morning mist because that's just what it reminds me of. Oh, that would be nice with the blush as well. Look at that. Cute. And now, um, oh, I've got another silky. Uh, this is my Flower of Scotland base, which I might actually take out of the shop. If it's still in the shop, you can buy it, but I might take it out of the shop for a prize for the Outlander Cal if we've got a lot of people taking part and I need more prizes. So this is my Flower of Scotland. It's based on the thistle. I was giving it a go. I really, really love this kind of green and purple. Mm, so nice. And I've got one more in the sock weight, and this is the last one I have in the bamboo base, called a bamboozle, because I enjoy that word. This is the mint dip, which is really, oh, you know this is my favorite color. I shouldn't have taken these out because I want them all. <laughs> I love this dip section. So the yarn is actually, this is these are um, dip dyed. I think all the silkies. Are, these are kind of striped dyed, so that's a cross skein dyed. So these are both dip dyed. And now, so I've got some of the Irish Aran weight now. So this is um, yarn that I got from Blarney Woolen Mills, and it came in like a big massive um, bale of it and it was kind of made for it's it's supposed to be for making jumpers but <laughs> I decided to start practice dyeing on them instead <laughs> and they came up so lovely so these are non superwash iron weight yarn and this is the the shallows colorway which just reminds me of like the shallow part of the sea and the ocean it's got this very light mint and then coming into navies and still leaving quite a lot of the whites in there as well for the for the brush of the waves. Enjoy that. I've got one left of the uh, crushed berries and mint gone away. Just these very vibrant purples in amongst that um, kind of a darker, kind of cooler green, kind of blue, cooler greeny blue, cooler mint. I've got tricolor, which I'm really enjoying. Every time I pull these out, I really enjoy them. They almost kind of look a bit pumpkin-y, a bit Halloween-y, like, like leaves turning. I think a hat in this would be, a little autumn hat would be so cute in this. I think that would be so nice. This yarn is, uh, is designed specifically for cables. Um, it's a classic Irish Aran sweater yarn. Um, so, an, oh my God, an amazing cable pattern, cable hat. Oh, oh, oh yes. I need um, sample knitters, by the way, if anyone, I know I've got you, Hannah. I might send this to you. Would you make, would you make a nice little cable -y? That would be nice. I think I might do that. Yeah. Anyway, if it's still in the shop, you can buy it. If it's still in the shop, you can buy it. <laughs> 
And then this one, I, I love the name of this one. This is called Drop Off. And it, so the part of the ocean that terrify, like terrifies me is the continental shelf. So, you know, when you're flying over, you know, in your private jet, when you're flying over the sea <laughs> and you are flying over the land and then you come to the sea and you can see like this, like really like the sea, the water's quite light and then it comes into this dark and then suddenly it goes bam, black, you know, like really deep blue and black. It's like, oh God. So yeah, I don't know. This yarn gives me that sort of vibe. So I've got two of those. So these are dip dyed as well. So they'll come up quite variegated. I love, these are obviously, this is obviously my color. So that's all the yarn I have left in the shop. I got a new batch of yarn delivered yesterday, which I'm excited about. And yeah, I'm going to be trying to concentrate on uh, some tonals, some deep color tonals, and also some grays and very, 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 very light speckles. Because everything that I did at uh, kind of at the start was kind of dip dyeing and trying out different colors and seeing which ones I got and seeing what I would, could get out of it. And I can, re I can repeat most of these. This one, I do not think I can repeat because I was just, I was kind of going, I kept on adding more and more and more and I don't think I, I, I took accurate notes. So I think this Calypso is possibly the last one um, exactly like this. So, and it's so nice. I'm proud of this one. And yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I've got a ton more of the cotton because I love it and I want to make a million, a million garments out of it. <laughs> it's just beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Love it. So even if it doesn't sell, I will I will use it all. Oh. I've also got a, um, if you're coming to the Atlantic Knitscapes on the 22nd or the 29th of September, I will be having my, um, a couple of yarns up there. So this is a yarn that I dyed up specifically based on a beautiful picture that Catherine Hastings, who is the, the organizer, um, based on a picture that she took um, that's on the Facebook page and it's just I think it's looking out over Inish Turk as the sunset and it's just like these beautiful pinks that were just like brushing off the edge of the clouds and then these like deep blues of the sea and the shine of the sun oh, and the clouds the clouds the clouds in the west of Ireland are the best so this is on a singles base, which I found very, very tricky to dye. I was very, very careful and I hope that it, they're okay. But um, yes, I don't know if I'll be doing singles again. It's tricky. <laughs> Maybe a different base, but I, they, they fluffed out so beautiful I can imagine a really soft squishy beautiful shawl in this but when I was dying them my heart was in my mouth I was like oh my god everything is really bad I'm gonna end up with a massive vat of felt but no it was beautiful <laughs> it turned out lovely it's 100% merino and oh I love this pink look at that lovely pink so they are going to be at the Atlantic Knitscapes and um, they're exclusive to there. I've got six of them. Yay. And I've also got a ton more yarn that I'm going to dye. I'm going to have about 25 skeins up there, I think. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Catherine. You're so nice. So now, oh, wait. Oh, I keep on saying, oh, I'm finished. And then I'm like, no, I'm not. So I've got a couple of um, things that I bought in France that I didn't show before so let me show right now so james managed to find me the one yarn shop on the island <laughs> and also bought me lots of yarn from there because he's the best boy ever so we went in anyway and there was only one really um type of yarn that was a wool that i could find that i liked um but it was kind of variegated and i didn't really want 
if I was going to buy wool, I was going to buy enough wool to do something with. So I decided not to buy it in the end. But I did find on sale this huge bag of cotton. So each one of these was like 20, like two euro 30 or something. It was a really, really, really brilliant deal. I was delighted with it. And I'm loving this kind of pumpkin-y color. It's so, so nice. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I might leave it until spring or I don't know. But I have it now, so that's fine. <laughs> um, I also saw these cute little things which were on sale. Um, they are 93% uh, acrylic and 7% elastine. And they're just so shiny. So this is Philadar. Philadar brand. So this beautiful mint, of course, and then this magenta. Amazing. So I've got two babies that I'm thinking of knitting for, which are born because I'm really bad and I uh, am not um, ahead of myself. I think the obligation knitting of the um, shawl was kind of enough for me. For a while but anyway I might do a pair of booties or a small little cardigan or something it would be awesome to do like I think a really cute little color worker striped cardigan would be nice and then I could just get two do two you know I think that would be really cute but I just love the shine off that so shiny yeah quite easy care for parents as well who wouldn't really necessarily be knitters Oh yes, and I was also in, <laughs> I was in La Rochelle, and then I was like, hey, we've got space in our, in our luggage, don't we? <laughs> because I bought this. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. I have not had a chance to get it out and play with it yet, but I am so excited. So it's a, like a weaving loom thing. And it's mint! <laughs> So, oh, it's so pretty. So hopefully I will be, or I will have the opportunity to play with it. I couldn't believe the price. I couldn't leave it behind me. So there we go. That, that, that's what happened. That's what happened in France. That's what I bought in France. It's so cute. And these were bought in Philador, Philador stores. And I believe they're all over France. I believe there's quite a lot of them. And this um, loom was 29.90 euros, so about 30 euros. 30 euros, give or take 10 cent. So yes, that's what I've been doing with myself. I hope you enjoy the podcast, even the endless ends. I mean, more ends than Lord of the Rings but anyway oh Lord of the Rings I should watch that again no I'm in the middle of um, blasting through um, Gilmore Girls thanks for sticking with me to the end of that sentence <laughs> I'm in the middle of blasting through Gilmore Girls and I wish I could speak as fast as them and be as funny as them but I'm not but I'm funny enough in my own way my silly little things so I'm really glad you joined me and I'm really glad you stuck to the end well done I'm proud of you and I hope you will uh, pop over and join the Outlander Cal and my Ravelry group some people are making incredible things I've also got a few ideas for the Voyager Mystery Cal which is coming up as well I'm really excited to see everyone's progress on the um the Stephen West Spe uh, Speculum Pop shawl that's going to be starting at the end of the month and also i'm loving watching everyone's progress on the uh the what the fade with the andrea maori it's another mid knit along so, or mystery knit along so that's super exciting and also mina philip has a uh, mystery shawl i think coming out for, and it's the road to rhinebeck shawl which sounds so cool i love watching mystery things but i don't i don't really um i'm scared to do them Next week, I'm going to talk a bit about me maybe maybe wanting to do brioche, but may, maybe not. And leave it at that. I love you lots. Thank you so much to everybody. I love everybody that watches this, regardless. I know, I'm reckless with my love. Bye! <laughs> if you're out on the road 
feel lonely and so cold All you got to do is call my name And I'll be there on the next train If you need, I will follow anywhere That you tell me to Oh crap, I got that far I'm impressed with myself I got that far, not realizing that I knew the lyrics.